Hmm. Okay. Now, from here we can also drive the results which is known as the Rolle's theorem. The statement of the Rolle's theorem is suppose that f is continuous uh, if f is a real continuous function on the closed and bounded interval a b which is differentiable which is differentiable uh, in the open interval a b uh, which is differentiable in the interval a b and that the value of the function at the end point coincides f a equal to f b and say equal to 0 we can even take without 0 also it will work 0 then uh, there exist then there exist there exist a point x in the interval a b such that the derivative of the function at this point is 0 the proof follows again from the Lagrange's main wave theorem in the Lagrange's Lagrange's case if we take f a equal to f b then implies the derivative of the function must be 0 for some x belonging to the interval a b that is the again the meaning a suppose we have a curve say suppose we have a curve of this type say like this and here is the point a this is the point say b function is continuous and differentiable over the open interval and at the end point both are attending the same value and equal to say 0 then they are according to this there will exist a one point x where the derivative vanishes f dash x will be 0 at this point means the line is parallel to x is of x slope will be 0 slope will be 0. So, this shows the result for them. Okay. Now, uh, using this uh, we can uh, come to now uh, uh, consequence of this here mean we can get one more result what this result says is suppose f is continuous suppose f is continuous f is continuous uh, on the closed interval close interval i close interval i and f is differentiable and differentiable in the open interval i at each point in the open interval i and the derivative f prime x equal to 0 for every x belonging to the open interval a b then f is a constant function constant and obviously the proof is very simple because we, we apply this uh, theorem lagrange's mean value theorem then over the interval we get uh, ax so proof is apply lagrange's mean value theorem over the interval say a x uh, there exists some point a uh, say a uh, x is already there. So, let us take the point a by a by okay. a by or a t let us take the point a t where the t is uh, lying between a a 
less than less than b okay t is this over this interval so if we apply this then what you get is f of t minus f of a equal to t minus a into the derivative so there exists a point x belongs to the interval a t which is of course subset of a b such that this result hold okay now if at this point it is zero but this is given that the derivative vanishes for every x belongs to the interval a b so this implies that f of t equal to f of a and for every t but t is arbitrary t is arbitrary so this implies the function f is constant function and as a consequence of this result we can say as a corollary that suppose f and g are continuous are continuous on the closed interval a b on the closed interval a b and differentiable and they are differentiable on the open interval a b in the open interval a b and and they satisfy the condition that a prime x equal to g prime x for all x belonging to the interval a b for all x belonging to the interval a b then then there exists a constant c then there exists a constant capital c such that the difference of this is equal to c means they differ by a constant so proof follows immediately so i will not go for this proof further okay now <laughs> using this thing we can also uh, drive the results for the functions which are monotonically increasing and decreasing so suppose that suppose f is differentiable f is differentiable in the open interval say a b then the following results holds then number one f if a prime x is greater than equal to 0 for all x belonging to the interval a b then f is monotonically increasing increasing b if derivative a prime x equal to 0 for all x belonging to the a b then f is constant which is already shown and c is if the derivative of the function is less than equal to 0 for all x belonging to a b then f is monotonically decreasing decreasing ok the converse is also true here if i take here the converse also hold that if f is monotonically decreasing then the derivative will be negative the converse is holds also hold and here also converse old hold ok so we can uh, proof is very simple just we take the uh, choose the interval say x 1 x 2 uh, choose x 1 x 2 where x 1 and x 2 these are the points of the interval a b for some x being exponent ok then apply apply Lagrange's mean value theorem then f of x 2 this is proof for a f of x 2 minus f x 1 
is equal to x 2 minus x 1 derivative of the function here for some x belonging to x 1 comma x 2. Okay. Now, it is given the derivative is greater than 0 for all x. So, this is given the derivative f prime x is greater than 0 for all x in the interval a b. So, this implies that f of x 2 is greater than <coughs> or equal to. So, it is greater than or equal to f of x 1 when for all for x 1 satisfying this condition x 2 is greater than x 1. Okay. So, this shows the function f is monotonically increasing function okay. monotonically increasing function. The converse of this also true the converse of it the converse also hold also holds why because suppose f is differentiable suppose that f is differentiable f is differentiable and increasing and increasing monotonically increasing in the interval i or on the interval i which is say our a b i is the interval a b okay? on the interval i. Now, take a point for any point for any point t which is different from x in i we have uh, we have f t minus f x over t minus x. Okay. Now, if I take this, this is the point x, here I am taking an interval suppose and t is point somewhere here. If t is in this interval, then x is greater than t. So, t minus x will be negative, is it not? t minus x will be, uh, sorry, uh, this limit of this limit of this when t tends to x because this limit exists it is differentiable and it is the derivative of the function at a point x and since it is a monotonically uh, increasing so f t will be less than f x. Uh, so, since f is monotonically increasing so f of t is less than f of x for t lying between this say interval a b here. Okay. So, this is less than 0 this one will be less than 0. So, this entire thing will be greater than equal to 0. So, it is greater than equal to 0. If t lies between this interval then what happen this will be if when t lies in in, in this interval then already t minus x that is equal to what uh, this will be greater than equal to 0 because uh, x will be here is it not. So, we can write it f t is a uh, f of x is less than f t. So, this is positive this is positive. So, this holds. So, basically this holds this holds <coughs> therefore, the result follow therefore, result follows. Similarly, for the second case we can go. So, we are not going to now here is a remark we can say a function f f is said to be strictly increasing strictly increasing on an interval say i if for any points 
for any points x 1 comma x 2 in i such that x 1 is strictly less than x 2 then we have we have f of x 1 is strictly less than f of x 2 then we say the function is strictly increasing. Now, when we prove the converse part of the previous result the note is the converse part of the previous theorem the converse part of the previous theorem is not true that is if the function is strictly increasing function that you cannot say that derivative will be strictly greater than 0. Okay but strictly greater than 0. For example, if we take the function f x which is x cube from r to r is strictly increasing increasing on r, but the derivative of the function at a point 0 is 0. Okay. So, what we say the function will not be strictly. So, here, here the function f prime a x is strictly greater than is not satisfied though the function is strictly increasing function. So, that is the important point which I will. Second remark which I wanted to give it and it is interesting also the remark says when we say the function is increasing at a point at a point then it has no meaning uh, then it means there exists some neighborhood in which the function is increasing. So, when we say a function a function is said to be increasing increasing at a point if there is if there is a neighborhood neighborhood of the point of the point on which on which the function is the function is increasing on which the function is increasing ok. So, uh, at increasing means if the derivative is strictly positive then the function is increasing at this point this is also new, but just by looking the derivative at a point we cannot decide, but just by looking the derivative of the function f x at the point at the point we cannot decide it is increasing or decreasing character or decreasing character that is that is if when we say uh, that is when we say the function is at this point. Uh, so, if the derivative if the derivative is strictly positive positive at a point at a point uh, then the function is then the function is increasing at this point uh, is this supposition is false then one cannot one cannot say that the function is strictly increasing function is increasing increasing at that point. For example, suppose I take a function g x which is defined as x plus 2 x square sin of 1 by x if x is not equal to 0 and equal to 0 if x is equal to 0. Okay. Now, this function 
the derivative of the function g prime 0 the derivative g prime 0 is g x minus g 0 over x minus 0 limit x tends to 0. So, that comes out to be what 1 plus limit of this x sin 1 by x as x tends to 0 and this limit comes out to be 0. So, we get g prime 0. So, g prime 0 is 0 which is strictly positive, but this function this function <coughs> g is not increasing in any neighborhood of 0 neighborhood of 0 ok uh, it cannot be this can be seen easily suppose this is the neighborhood of 0 and I take this neighborhood consider the point say here the point I am choosing as x equal to 1 by 2 n pi and also here another points I am taking as uh, uh, so sorry it is positive. So, let us take oh, it is ok let us take another point uh, x is equal to 1 by 4 n plus 1 pi by 2. Now, both this point clearly choose x such that x is either this or this then then the x goes to x tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. So, these are the point in the neighborhood of 0. So, x belongs to the neighborhood of 0 with a suitable radius say delta that I am not but what is our function the function derivative of the function the derivative g prime x what is this value uh, uh, if we look the derivative uh, the function g prime uh, 1 upon 2 n pi what is the function is this ok. So, when at this point when you find the derivative of this g dash x g dash x uh, is function because the derivative g is g is this function x plus 2 x square sin 1 by x when x is not equal to 0. So, when you differentiate it directly you get 1 plus 4 x sin 1 by x plus 2 x square cosine of 1 by x into minus 1 by x square is it not. Now, the value this g prime x comes out to be 1 plus 4 x sin 1 by x and minus 2 times cos 1 by x ok. Now, you see if I take at x equal to 1 by 2 n pi the derivative g prime x this is the any integral multiple of sin is 0. So, sin 1 by x becomes 0. So, this part is not there cos of 1 by x cos of 1 by x when you take the multiple of pi 2 pi then it is always be cos 0 is 0 cos 2 pi is 1. So, it is always be 1. So, value will be minus 1. So, it will be negative 4 at this point and if we take x equal to 1 by 4 n plus 1 pi by 2 then in that case what happens is uh, um, at this point the function g dash x g has a derivative has derivative negative. So, at this point the function g has derivative derivative that is g prime x will be positive why it is positive let us see if you look the for odd multiple of pi by 2 with n is equal to 1 to 3. So, in fact when n is 1 5 pi by 2 7 pi by 2 and so on. So, this will be odd multiple of pi by 2 this will go to 0. So, there and here it will give the positive values 1 is it not. So, we are always getting the positive value. So, this is always good positive when n is a positive integer n belongs to n n belongs to n. So, it is positive therefore, in the neighborhood of the 0 
in the neighborhood of 0, the derivative is negative as well as positive. So, neither you can say it is increasing function nor it is decreasing function, although the function which we have taken uh, g prime is 0 at the point 0. So, what conclusion is if the derivative of a function at certain point is positive or negative, we cannot conclude its increasing nature or decreasing nature until, uh, until we are sure that in the neighborhood the function has a character for increasing or decreasing that is all. Thank you very much.